that he brought brief back new Smash. life into Zuha's esports last season. Will he be able to do so Welcome now for Team Karakal? We're back again in the land of dawn, ladies and gentlemen. And a book already starting before the game can even really get started here. Bad Boy getting picked up with the Iron Hook. Meryl already showing his stuff. We we barely got out of the split screen and he's like, yo, just, just to let you guys know, I'm using Franco. I was kind of crazy with it, just to remind you. All right, don't forget, we're good. Let's start the game. Yeah, just instilling fear in your opponent before they even know what hits them. We can see there's going to be a slightly more aggressive positioning by Team Karakal here, even pulling Rash over to secure the Litto and potentially invade. But, oh, oh, oh. Zion still steals it away from them. Hey, you know what? As a rookie, his performance has been crazy. And right now, I want to see him actually developing into a more mature jungler, making sure that he makes the right plays. And look at this, ready sport. They're putting two people onto the gold lane, creating a lot of pressure for Zed. As a clod, it's already difficult for you to really uh, do much in lane, but putting a Franco there, it's just going to create too many problems. Yeah, not a fun lane for Zed, especially with this Claude. We know that he it's already a hero that tends to have a rough time against most marksman matchups. And typically when you are up against a carry, you would want a hero that could pressure it. But speaking of pressure in the mid lane, Zayed playing very aggressively. He knows he can escape any of this. This is why it's, it's so annoying going up against a Benedetta. You kind of know... She doesn't really have the damage to kill you just yet. But just the amount of damage that she can dish out and, and the fact that she can run away because of all those crazy dashes, it just creates a situation where your farm as well as your, your rotation is slowed by, by default. And it's not your fault. It's just the way that the Benedetta plays. What I do like right now is that Bad Boy is obviously clearing the way faster as compared to Ash on this Lunox, and he is roaming around with his team quite a lot. Unfortunately, not really applying enough pressure to the lanes because Red Esports has been gooding, doing a very good job of just responding to any aggression. Mom now jumping on top of Rash, forcing out the ultimate, and a really nice two-man knockup strike allows the take of the turtle going over to Zion. Yeah, it looks like perhaps a small miscommunication there where Menzel did actually push uh, Zayakimi away. However, Can Meow, okay, he used his retribution, so he probably used it a little bit early. Let's look at the M lips. And oh. before that, we're going to look at Miro catching out and Mal managing oh. to get the first blood onto Zed Meow. Right, I'm sorry, did he just hook the Claude after he used Battle Mirror Image? He flickers in, bloody hunts, and then hooks him after he TPs away. But now Ken wants revenge. Mal, he does not have any help here. That's going to be a return kill. Hey, they are our focus player for a reason. And yeah, again, playing as, as a clod against a good Franco is not fun just because the Franco, he knows where you're going to go after this. As long as the, the clod's HP is going to go low, it's like, oh, he's going back? <laughs> I know where Dexter is. I just feel like the level of gameplay in Season 10 has just grown by leaps and bounds. I don't know what these players have been doing since Season 9, but I am all for it. In terms of the junglers right now, Zayt going to have the advantage. Level 7 to the Lynx level 6. Merle going to get pinned to the wall with G. Heavy spin, and that's going to be a kill going over to Team Karakal. Yeah, but look at that. Mal actually can dish out respectable damage. And uh, I'm just going to answer your, your question by saying, M4. They're ah. doing this for the M4. And right now, Mom up against uh, Rash Meow. That was so far. Looks like might be the hot pick for, for the EXP lane because so far, no one has lost as a Tamus, at least in lane. There's no good lane matchup for a Tamus. Zayat, did he steal that? Nope. It looks like Ken was still able to secure it. And now Zayat himself is in a lot of danger, trying to dash out the rest of his team coming in. But Ken will be able to pick up the kill. This is one of those things that I want to see Zayat change. I want to see him grow as a mature jungler because we know he has the mechanics, but he needs more experience to really be able to look at the situation and really see, should I go for this trade or not? He was alone, so perhaps that was a little bit questionable. Mom is able to see that the turtle has been initiated. However, he can't do much. And right now, he has to run away from Rashmiel. His HP is dangerously low, but Menzel pushes them away, making sure that bad boy stays alive. 
Oh, Mom in a bit of danger here. He's actually taking the fight against Rash and Meow here, and he will just barely survive. But the Paquito not having a very fun time as now Ken Meow coming in looking for Mom. Not quite able to finish him off though. Yeah, Mom, he's, uh, he's playing with fire. His, his HP is super low, but just because he was able to buy the Bloodless Axe, he, he's a little bit more, more, more confident. When, when the minion came in, we saw him him getting the spell van back up. So he is very, very, you know, like, I, I just want to say slightly greedy because that could have been bad. That could have been really bad. But if we look at the gold ranking, Maul looking pretty good. And Zed might get focused once again. A concealed play, but a nice battle mirror image will allow Zed to get out as Mansa looking for Zayat forces him to dash out of danger. Mom again in danger, being taken out. Vengeance popped by Rash, but Mom is able to flicker away. He's actually still fighting the Tamas behind the wave right now. He has to be cautious. He has lifesteal, but Tamas has damage. <laughs> no, the thing is, Tamas he has lifesteal as well, so Mom really has to be careful. This, this is what, what I'm talking about. He's playing this game super dangerously and hits oh. the game, but this time Ken Meow is there. Ken is trying to get a kill onto Mom, and Mom right now has nowhere else to go, oh. but he still <laughs> manages with the heavy left punch, getting a clutch shield. What was that? Mom just flexing in the EXP lane. You thought I was a rover? Nope, I can do this too. That was perfectly timed. Just using the heavy left punch to get that shield. And now Bloody Hunt onto Mianzal. Will do a lot of damage with Maul, but not quite enough. And that means Bad Boy will be able to pick up the Franco in the back line. He might still have Darkening up, so he's looking for Ash and Maul, who are both dangerously low, forcing the flicker from the Eve. Right, right now, Team Karakal, they're playing so well because they know what Ray Sport want to do. They want to make sure that they win the gold lane. And Team Karakal, they just respond they, they just respond accordingly. So this is good and bad for, for Ray Sport. The good thing is they have a very clear win condition. But the bad thing is it's too clear. It's easy for Team Karakal to, to read what they're trying to do and just counter appropriately. Despite that though, Red Esports has claimed victory with this same strategy plenty of times in the past. So as long as Maul isn't put too far behind, he will be absolutely fine. We can see he's already got the Wind Talker and the Golden Staff. So in terms of itemization, he's actually slightly ahead of Zed, who has gone for a slightly more defensive option. Yeah, looking at looking at the itemization as well, I, I, I like to see that Zed Meow, he, he did build a little bit of armor, making sure that he can stay alive for a little bit longer. Right now, they have swap lane. Zed wants this bottom turret now. And Mom, Ooh. there's nowhere for you to go. It's going to be an easy kill. Bad Boy Meow secures it for himself. An easy turret, but it looks like Red Esport. They might want to bring this. Bad Miro with a crazy hook, managing to actually get Bad Boy Meow in the back. And the rest of the team has to retreat. A good gank from Team Karakal, but also a good response from Red Esports. You can see here, Ken actually playing quite dangerously because he knows he has to escape to get out of the clutches of Red Esports. But so far, these teams are surprisingly even. I think Team Karakal has definitely improved a little bit after their loss yesterday. Well, if they do win, we gotta give props to Menzel Miao, 0-0 and 5. He's been playing very, very well, making sure that whatever ganks that they do execute, either he manages to get a kill or he makes sure that his poor damage dealer survived oh. and Miro what a clutch hook that just forced Mianzal to waste heavy spin. I feel like he didn't have to do that because you could tell that Maul wasn't interested in actually getting that kill. I don't think he has enough damage, but here he comes again. Bloody hot onto the Akai, and now they know he doesn't have his ultimate. Beautiful use of timings from Red Esports. Now they're aiming down Bad Boy, forcing out the Brilliance. Will they still follow it up? They're going to, and they will find his oh. no much mobility. Blazing Duet from Zed doing a lot of damage in the back line. Here comes the Rash as well, forcing Flicker from Mural. Zayd still trying to dish out some damage, but a good disengage from Red. I kind of feel like I got to stop talking up for the players. I was talking about how good Menzel was, and then he got caught. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a correlation there, but either way, Menzel is still playing very, very well. But Miro, it, it kind of looks like in the map, the bushes don't exist. Even if they're there, he still has vision somehow. He knows where to hook, and he's going to bring in the kills. For Mal, Mal right now, 2, 1, and 0, Zed Meow, 1, 1, 2. I still feel they're kind of on even ground, but as a team, Red Esports, they have a 1,000 gold lead. 
Uh, now they want to go for the Lord. All five members of both teams are in the area. Mianzao will have heavy spin now. Lord doing a lot of damage. Heavy spin coming into the backline. Miru out of position. And now the heavy spin is dismantling the backline. Reward manipulation comes out. Four members of Red Esports still alive. They're looking for Rash and they will find it. And now Bad Boy has to use Brilliance to get away from Mom. But it might not be enough. He's dropping real low. They find Bad Boy. Mom is nearly dead, but he's still alive. And they find Mianzao as well. And that is going to be a one fight for Red Esports. I would say it's a mixture of good decision making from Red, but bad decision making coming in from the side of Team Karakal because even though their HP was low, they tried to fight a little bit more. Zed has to be careful because he is very low on mana. And I understand that they really want this Lord, but it's just 10 minutes. You could really let oh! the Lord go away. Why did you go in, Ken? Why? This is the question from the previous team fight up until that Lord fight. Why? It's just the first Lord. It's not worth it for you to die for that Lord. Hisk wanted to poke in and see if he could grab it. In this sense, Curiosity killed the cat right there. And even the hook from Meryl pulling Mianzal out of position. This Franco is such a nuisance to Team Caracal. Yeah, but again, I, I, I got to put that on Team Caracal. That was bad decision making because looking at the situation, if we, if we, if we could re rewind time and look at their HP and look at their mana and look at the amount of skills that they still have, it's not a favorable fight for them to take, but they still want to take it. And then the Lord, if it was a Luminous Lord, oh, an Evil Lord, that would be different. But again, look here, Zed Meow popping the Blazing Duet, trying to clear the minion. Mom is there alone. He <laughs> flickered into the wall and looks oh. like he's not going to get away. Zayakimi tried to save his teammate, but look at oh. that hook coming in from Miro. But it is on to Menzel, so he can survive. If Mal was there, it would have been a different story. All things considered, that was actually a pretty good disengage from Red Esports. They were stuck under the heavy spin underneath Team Caracal's tower, and they all split up pretty well, only losing one. In terms of damage dealt, though, Bad Boy and Zed Vian are both at the top of the list. These two are doing a lot of DPS. A lot of damage, but still not, resor not resulting in... Um in what they really want, which is map pressure. So for Team Karakal, they kind of have to slow down the game a little bit because whoever their, their, their shot caller is, they need to calm down. They need to see clear-cut advantages that they can take advantage of. Because right now, the Hakimi as well as Ken, they're fighting over the, 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 the purple buff. And it looks like Zaid secured it. Not too certain about that one. It looks like he did. Mom now 1v3, heavy spin, going to miss the Paquito. Really nice juking here. Zayat now coming in from the back line. Mom gonna be doing as much damage to Bad Boy as possible to set up for the Benedetta. Conceal used, but Zed is out of position. Brilliant to allow Lunox to get away. Blazing Duet popped down, suppressed by the bloody hunt. Zed is left out to rot, and the rest of his team can do nothing to save him. Zayat actually still pursuing, but the Ecto final blow, but that is enough for now. Put respect on the Franco because, again, no matter what you're trying to do, you're gonna get caught. And we saw that from, from Zed Meow. He tried to run away. I'm, I'm pretty sure he knew he was dead just because he saw the Franco, so he thought might as well just pop his ultimate, try to dish out as much damage as he can, but that mistake should not have happened. They shouldn't have, have missed position so so far ahead, and, and Menzel should be around to help support his his Marksman, just in case if anything goes wrong, and we saw things definitely went wrong. They underestimated the mobility coming out of Mom. His ability to get out of these sticky situations is really on full display here, and Rash taking a lot of poke damage there from Ash. The Tamas will have to recall, meaning that Red Esports can get started on this Lord. Right now with a 3,000 gold lead, they have to be careful of this Franco because if they overextend, the Franco will definitely punish them, especially looking at how fast they, they actually engage on any kind of team fight. Right now, Red Esports, they're, they're kind of forcing Team Karakal because they know how Karakal plays. If they see a fight, they will try to force it out, and that might be the situation right here. Lord going to actually get reset here. Not sure if that was intentional by Red Esports, but they do need to respect Team Karakal's engagement right now. They don't know where Mianzal is for sure, and he does still have Heavy Spin available. You can see from their positioning, Miral is mainly concerned about people coming in from behind. And Ash is keeping a good eye on the mid lane to ensure that he can clear it up as well. Ken Meow, unfortunately, the only one with mobility on the side of Team Karakal has to go and clear up waves on the opposite side of the map. If he can take advantage of this, of this tangle, of this dance around the Lord, Ken could potentially get a lot of 
a lot of farm over here and perhaps try to push out the waves a little bit more, making sure that Red Esport, they have to answer to one of the pushes because right now Team Caracal as well as Team Red Esport, they're just waiting for someone to pull the trigger. Yeah, and can... Well. Oh, Menza going in front. Oh, concealed play. He, oh, he almost gets hooked there, but oh, he just barely isn't able to survive. Killing spree going over the mall, and now the fight has begun. Lord is low on HP. Bloody hunt on Rash inside the pit. Bad boy flickers in, gets knocked up. Forced to use the Tempest of Blaze to stop the real one immediately. Shin. Maul has to survive with the Wind of Nature. Zed doing a lot of damage with Blazing Duet. Ash probably has to be left behind. Sacrifice Zion still around, but it is Team Karakal who secured the Lord. They pick up Mom on top of it all. Good team fight from Team Karaka, but overall, we gotta talk about Zed. Look at how he positioned. During that entire team fight, he kited everything out. He went back in, he swapped places with Dexter and tried to dish out the damage. But so far, I gotta say, big props onto Zed as well as Ken Miao. Ken actually going on to treat people with his Tempest of Blade, getting that crucial knockup, canceling out the real world manipulation, actually dealing a lot of damage as well as crowd control and creating so much space for Zed. For side of Red Esport, they were happy they managed to get Menzel off guard, which is great, but again, they gotta focus on Zed as well as Ken. If not, Team Karakal might actually win this one. They're in the base of Red Esports. Two inhibitor towers gonna fall instantly to the side of Team Karakal. That's gonna be a lot of damage done once we see the Lord push. But Team Karakal looks like there's a good bit of discipline there. They know that that's probably all they're going to get and instantly back things off. Yeah, and we're, we're looking at the scaling over here because again, Team Karakal, they have the Claude, they have the Ling, they have the Lunox. The damage is going to be super good come come late game, and we're, we're about to approach that. And right now, the AI winning prediction brought to us by Mech Delivery, it's saying that Team Karakal has a very favorable spot, 74% chance of winning this game. And Red Esport, again, their clear win condition is Mal. If they can, if anyone from the side of Team Karakal, even if they have to sacrifice their own life, and managed to kill Mal. Team Karakal, they have three sources of damage. Honestly, even, even Rash could, could deal a lot of damage. Because looking at, at, at the items over here, Rash, he has a lot of defensive items, but having that Corrosion Scythe, making it sure so that if anyone is caught off guard with the amount of slow that he will uh, apply, they can't run away. Well, it looks like we're gonna be going into a short break here, Peeves, we gotta make sure that everything is working on the side of both teams. Right now, we can see the score is 9-11, to 11, favoring Red Esports, but after winning that previous fight, Team Karakal are in a much better control over the Land of Dawn. And if they can continue pushing this forward, as you mentioned, Lafel, they have better scaling compared to Red Esports, because the red lineup depends completely on the carry dishing out DPS, so as long as as Team Karakal can play around that, they have an easy path to victory. Yeah, and as we see here, the pause has been requested by Team Karakal, and they're, they're, they're troubles, troubleshooting the, the, the situation right now. However, it doesn't look like it will take long for, for this pause in, in particular. And yeah, I feel like this is this is the double-edged sword of Red Esports draft, where again, you have Mal, probably one of the best gold leaders MBL Malaysia has ever seen. So it's always a good idea to play around him. But Zayt is a, you know, like he's a star in his own right as a jungler and having the Benedetta is great and all, but perhaps they, they should give him someone that that can really get those kills as well because right now the threat is Mal alone, but from the side of Karakal, there's, there's three different people there, so who do you really focus on? Yeah, it's quite difficult for Red right now when you have to think about Zed, you have to think about Bad Boy, you have to think about Rash. And on top of that all, the heavy spin there to set things up for Team Karakal and Red Esports have quite the uphill battle to think about here. The next Lord is only going to be up in another 70 seconds. So Team Karakal want to make use of this time to get as much jungle control as possible. Yeah, and Menzel as well. He has been a big difference maker for the side of Team Karakal. I mean, they haven't won just yet, but... So far, it looks like their their team chemistry has gotten better. And the thing is, they got better towards the game. Earlier, they, they have made some questionable mistakes, but, you know, they, they, they grow inside the game and they're starting to play the team fights a little bit better. Zed is taking care, making sure that he doesn't absorb any kind of damage. And Ken Meow, he tries to, to stop the real world manipulation. And look at this, Lord Push Advantage, 19,000 damage was able to put up by Team Karakal. 
That's two full inhibitor towers right there for Team Caracal, meaning that Red only has one inhibitor left to defend their base and no external towers. In comparison, Team Caracal, they still have their full mid lane of towers. So it's actually quite difficult for Red Esports to push into this simply because of how much they have invested in this four protect one strategy. They have to look at Miro. If he manages to, to catch people off guard like right now, Zed, um, you're, you're being a little bit too too in front there, buddy. I mean, you, you got to be careful. You got to respect the Franco because even if you think the if, if you think the, the situation is unhookable, he'll manage something. Ooh, they're starting it off. Nice knockout strike from Mom, chunking out 40% of Mianzal's HP, but it's not quite enough. He might have actually pushed him out of hook range from Mural as well, causing that to miss. Lord going to get reset and Rash just providing information for his team because Team Karakal, they don't want to engage on this just yet. But with the Hulk just missing, Mianzal is making the call. Conceal, Red Esports, they know that's happening, instantly back things off. This is a very delicate dance between these two teams. Yes, again, looking at how Menza plays, he likes to use the heavy spin first and then he's going to dash it, possibly using the flicker. And so far, he has been on point. So I trust his judgment in, in knowing whether he, they have the damage or not. Speaking of which, Team Karakal, they're going forward. And they're managing to secure the Lord right under Red Esport noses. And Zyde tries to run away. A clean getaway. They got that basically for free. That's exactly how you want a Lord attempt to go. Really well done to Team Karakal. Red Esports took just a bit too long. And that hook beautifully weaved in between two members of Team Karakal. That's got to feel a bit bad. I'm, I'm looking at, at the players' faces, Zed and Menzel. They look so happy. And, and, and based on their face, even they're like, how did we get away with that? Like, everyone was there. No one noticed the Lord at all. But we got to talk about Bat Boy. Zed and Ken's damage. Again, three damage dealers that, that scale super well in the late game. Yeah, the Lord will not stay there for, for a long time. Right now, Team Caracal, they're marching on to Red Esports base. Um, Zayed gonna be using Electro Final Blow to clear up the Lord, but the top inhibitor already dropped down. Flicker in with the heavy spin, displacing most of Red Esports. Team Caracal, they don't care about Red. They want the crystal, and they will break straight through to gain their first victory of MPL Season 10. And just like that,